What's up, everyone? Welcome to Film Spot, and today we will be talking about the best upcoming movies. Dwayne Johnson shares a disappointing Black Adam update as the DC Universe film dealt with the financial struggle at the box office. The fate of the DCU has been unknown for the last few weeks, as Gunn and Peter Safran are now leading the franchise. Having spent nearly two decades trying to bring Black Adam to the big screen, Johnson got his due this fall, but not with the expected results. Throughout the last few weeks, he has remained silent on all the ongoing shakeups at DC Studios. Now Johnson has broken his silence on the future of his franchise and Black Adam too. He shared a complete statement on Twitter about having met with the new DC Studio leaders, confirming that the first chapter of the DCU won't include his anti-hero. However, the actor teases there will be things to look forward to in the future. Gunn has also responded to Johnson's Black Adam statement, showing his support for the actor. According to The Direct, Gal Gadot is set to return to the Fast and Furious franchise in 2023's Fast X. While Gadot has starred in Wonder Woman, Red Notice, and Death on the Nile over the last few years, her role as Giselle Yashar in 2009's Fast and Furious is what launched her career. In 2011's Fast Five, her character develops a romantic relationship with Han Lu, played by Sung Kang. But then in 2013's Fast and Furious 6, her character was killed in an attempt to save Han. Specific details regarding Gadot's role in Fast X are currently unknown. Since Godot's character died in Fast and Furious 6, it's definitely a surprise to learn that she's back for Fast X. While the details of how and why have yet to be revealed, she's not the first character the franchise has brought back from the dead. Han, who played Godot's character's love interest and was also killed off, recently returned in Fast 9. The 2021 film revealed that Kurt Russell's Mr. Nobody, who once worked with Giselle, helped Han fake his death in exchange for coming to work for him. It will be interesting to see how those previous events play into Godot's return as Giselle and contribute to the upcoming film. Fast X is expected to arrive in theaters on May 19, 2023. A new report has confirmed when the Flash movie trailer will finally be released in 2023, as Ezra Miller returns to the DC Universe as Barry Allen. The Scarlet Speedster returns to the big screen in 2023, with Miller donning the red suit again. Despite facing multiple legal controversies in 2022, Miller's The Flash film is going forward, which has been in the works since 2014. After being stuck in development hell for years, its filmmaker Andy Muschietti is bringing The Fastest Man Alive's first solo movie adventure to life. Originally, The Flash was going to be released last month, but was delayed till next summer due to heavy post-production work. While there hasn't been any new footage released for the Flash movie, the wait is almost over. According to The Wrap, Warner Brothers Discovery is set to debut a brand new trailer for Miller's film during the Super Bowl. This will be happening on Sunday, February 12th, 2023. According to The Trade, the studio is doing this because the Flash movie has continued to perform well during test screenings. The last time any new footage was shown for the Flash film was during DC Fandom 2021, right after filming had finished. A new report suggests that director James Cameron delivered a nine-hour cut of the upcoming Avatar 3 to the studio and asked for it to receive full VFX. The Avatar franchise is finally returning to theaters after 13 years with the long-awaited sequel, Avatar The Way of Water. The new movie is the first step in Cameron's plan for the expansion of the franchise, which appears to be coming in a big way with Avatar 3. According to Jeff Snyder on the Hot Mike podcast, Cameron handed in a nine-hour cut of Avatar 3 to 20th Century Studios. He then demanded that the visual effects be fully done for all nine hours before deciding what will be cut down. Snyder doesn't corroborate the report himself, but his willingness to share suggests there could be some validity to its claims. Before even getting into the Avatar 2 story details, the logistics behind putting a nine-hour cut of Avatar 3 in theaters would be a nightmare. Any movie with a runtime over three hours already presents logistical problems to theaters, with fewer showings being available due to the long runtime and the necessary cleaning period in between showings. Cameron obviously knows this, which is why he's reportedly still planning to cut down the movie, releasing it in theaters. However, the studio is unlikely to accept the expenditure of completing VFX for a cut of a movie most will never see. From a story standpoint, if Cameron actually asked for full VFX on a 9-hour cut, then that means the Titanic director is extremely confident in what's been shot for Avatar 3. 
Still, releasing a 9 hour movie isn't really feasible because it's an absurd amount of time to ask audiences to spend at a theater, no matter how good. Perhaps the best way to handle it is to take Cameron's recent comments of bringing Avatar into the television space and applying them to Avatar 3. The directors talked about how the necessary technology to produce a long-form series set in the Avatar universe is still 10 years away. But if he's truly confident in all 9 hours of Avatar 3, then a solution could be reached. If 20th Century Studios agree to Cameron's request and complete VFX on the 9 hour cut of Avatar 3, and Cameron then trims the movie down to a more reasonable theatrical cut, that would leave the director with a substantial amount of content set in the world of Pandora on his hands. He would then need to repurpose the cut footage into a series, but if Cameron has the mind to make this work, then a few superfluous subplots from Avatar 3 could become a welcomed companion adventure to the movie. That's at least one way to rationalize completing VFX on a 9 hour cut of Avatar 3. Once planned to be a series of standalone stories, the hit horror thriller franchise The Purge is set to take focus on Frank Grillo's character Leo Barnes in its sixth installment. Grillo made his first appearance in the series in 2013's The Purge Anarchy. Anarchy was the first follow-up to the original 2012 film, which starred Ethan Hawke and grossed $89.3 million on a budget of just $3 million. The franchise has continued to be a success for Universal Pictures and Blumhouse Productions, sparking anticipation for a new entry. In an interview with Empire Magazine ahead of the publication's February 2023 issue, Grillo talked about the status of The Purge 6 and detailed what director James DeMonico and his team have planned for his character Leo Barnes. DeMonico was at the helm for each of the first three entries in the series and wrote all five films. Grillo confirmed that the next movie would be his last in the Purge universe, and they're currently trying to get the movie off the ground at Universal. In the excerpt released by Empire, no timeline was given for production. Keanu Reeves wields nunchucks in a new image from the upcoming John Wick Chapter 4. The action-packed franchise began with retired hitman John Wick being pulled back into the underworld he left in hopes of a better life, seeking revenge against those who wronged him. John eventually finds himself the target of the High Table, the group that controls the criminal underworld, with John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum seeing him left down but not out. John Wick Chapter 4 is set to continue on the story. The fourth installment brings Reeves back in the lead role alongside Lawrence Fishburne, Lance Reddick, Donnie Yen, Bill Skarsgård, and Ian McShane. Entertainment Weekly shared a new image from John Wick Chapter 4 featuring Reeves in combat with nunchucks. The image offers audiences a look at John wielding a weapon he hasn't yet used in the franchise, while also showing him facing off against a uniquely armored enemy. While viewers are still in the dark about much of what the fourth film has in store, the new photo has glimpses at how the franchise is working to stay fresh and exciting for fans. Hugh Jackman confirms that Deadpool 3 will involve time travel when he returns to reprise the iconic role of Logan, aka Wolverine. While the Marvel Cinematic Universe will introduce new takes on the X-Men in coming phases, Deadpool 3 will be a blast to the past. After having retired from the Wolverine role after 2017's Logan, Jackman is returning to the comic book genre. In a surprise announcement earlier this fall, he and Ryan Reynolds revealed that the Deadpool 3 quill would see the two Marvel icons share the screen. Deadpool 3 will also see Wade Wilson officially be integrated into the larger MCU following Disney's acquisition of 21st Century Fox. While Deadpool 3 won't release until November 2024, Jackman has revealed a massive plot point about the upcoming installment. During an appearance on Sirius XM, Jackman speaks about the process of joining the Deadpool sequel when approached this fall. Without giving away too many spoilers, the Australian actor reveals that Deadpool 3 would involve time travel to some degree. According to Jackman, it was important that his return as Wolverine wouldn't mess with the way Logan ended. Jackman also expressed that it wasn't only imperative for him, but probably for fans too. James Cameron says he's had discussions about relaunching the Terminator franchise, and already knows what the new story would be about. Cameron kicked off a highly successful sci-fi action franchise with his iconic 1984 film The Terminator, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as a cyborg assassin from the future. 
The 1991 sequel, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, thrilled audiences while racking up blockbuster-level box office. But subsequent entries in the series have experienced diminishing returns, both with critics and in terms of box office receipts. Fans indeed were left wondering after 2019's Terminator Dark Fate whether they'd seen the last of Cameron and Schwarzenegger's classic movie franchise. But now it seems that Terminator isn't quite terminated yet. Appearing on the Smartless podcast with Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett to promote his current blockbuster, Avatar The Way of Water, Cameron gave an update on the future of his other big sci-fi franchise, Post Dark Fate, and confirmed that talks have indeed happened concerning a possible relaunch. Cameron then went on to tease the new direction he would take Terminator in, if indeed he gets a chance to make another movie somewhere down the road. He said, Well, the Avatar films are about the environment. I'm not dealing with AI. If I were to do another Terminator film and maybe try and launch that franchise again, which is in discussion, but nothing has been decided, I would make it much more about the AI side of it than bad robots gone crazy. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.